What's up, YouTube fam? Robbie C here. We are out at Shadow Lake Disc Golf property, and I have two zones in my hand. And we're gonna be asking the question, do they actually hold up? How do I feel about them compared to the pig? So we're gonna throw a couple of warm-up shots real fast, get things started, especially with this. Uh, we got the banger top and the ringer top. Start with the banger top right here. Oh no. Whew, huh? I guess that's where it belongs. Time to compare the real Zone GT with a pick. Let's jump into it. But before we do, how are you doing today, Hunter and Trevor? Are you having a good one? So catch me if I fall. All right, people, real talk. We are out here with the Zone GT ringer top concept because it definitely has the most pig-like comparison. You've seen videos that are completely unbiased by guys like Hunter and Trevor over a foundation. And one of their big statements is that a disc like the ringer top already exists. We have the pig, we have the slammer. We have those different thumb track type overstable discs. However, as someone who is a certified pig farmer, I would tell you that one of the biggest things that we don't actually have is premium plastic overstable thumb track approach disc. You have the pig, which notoriously doesn't come in premium plastic, even though the world is clearly asking for halo pigs and Innova doesn't seem to want to do that. Yes, you have something like the Saki Bomb Slammer, but it is much more Zone OS-like than it is more Zone or pig-like. And so I'm highly curious about having a premium plastic option in the thumb track category that is overstable, but not like reliably or crazy overstable. So I wanna take this zone and compare it to another zone that I had in my bag when I caddied up for Brody at Music City Open. And we'll see how these two fly. So for flight purposes, just so you know with pigs, because as a guy who throws a lot of pigs, it would be easy to go to, let's say, the pig that I currently have in my bag as my main throwing putter, problem is is that I have used this one a lot so while it still flies like a stock pig it does have some subtle nuances to it and I'm incredibly familiar with especially this specific pig so this guy is a Ricky 2023 tour series pig which is the most overstable run of pigs that I find on a regular basis or at least ones that hold that overstability for the longest amount of time it's a little seasoned as you can tell but I think it's a good comparison to what I would consider a stock R pro pig to feel like which is really what we're testing this up against now our first hole comes in at 218 feet. It's just a simple hyzer out to that straight white basket out there. Hopefully we're gonna be able to throw these out there, get a good feel of it, get a good shot, see how we're feeling. Haven't thrown any shots today, so this should be a nice, truly good warm up. Now I'll talk about hand feel and things like that as we go through, but I will go ahead and say that traditionally, I have not liked the zone hand feel just because it is a little more shallow than the pig. I know a lot of people will say that they love the zone for forehands because it's so shallow, it comes off really clean off their hands. Another thing that's gonna be interesting is we've had a bit of a cold snap come through. It's about 35, 40 degrees out here today. So especially considering this weekend, I was sweating at 80 degrees. My hands are trying to adjust to this. So the premium plastic feel of the zone as well as the bottom zone here being the more shallow side. I'll be curious how it holds up on a forehand. But like I said, we're going backhands first. So I'm gonna throw the pig because I know how pigs fly. That'll give me a good stable read on how I'm throwing today so that I can make adjustments with the Zone GT. Okay, absolutely juiced it way past the basket. Wind's definitely swirling. You can kind of hear it. I don't know if the mic's good enough to like pick up, but you can hear it swirling through the trees. I've obviously got a lot of water right there, so wind coming off of there. So should be really good tests for these overstable putting approach discs. Yeah, that's really nice. Fought straight, came over, but even when the wind got underneath it, didn't actually like fight out too much or didn't like get majorly pushed. But really saw it on my backhand. All right, so we've been shooting a lot of videos trying to get ahead because I like Sai Guy to be able to go and edit as fast as he wants. So I'm not really sure if the video we shot trying out the PA3s has come out before or after this one, but uh, I think this video is gonna be dropping the Thursday before Thanksgiving. So we have PA3s in the bag right now. I saw those cool hockey puck PA3s from Prodigy and thought, that could be cool. It's not cool as that branch being right there. Definitely juice the pig way past the basket. Really, brother. Okay. 
There you go. Zone actually ended up, it was a little short of the basket, so never really stood a chance, but. Okay. I do know on PA3s, you gotta commit. We like how these putts are coming out of our hands. <laughs> They're just not going in. Initial hole, zone gets a heads up on the go wacky zone. So um, definitely over juiced it and made the correction there. So it's hard to tell. It wasn't necessarily the flights it was making correction. Flew very similar on a backhand. Excited to see these on forehand. Here we go. So hole four for this course. Sets up for the forehand, allows us to just go out and in. Got to keep it somewhat tight because of the forehand, like that tree on the left side, definitely in the way here. 200 feet, so we can't really juice it. Once again, we're going pig first because we know how a pig feels on a forehand. This is first forehand we're throwing to the day, so should hopefully be able to get a couple of reads here. Okay, really nice, really solid. Just what we like out of a pig. Go straight, but it's still gonna fade at the end. Not really too worried because of the overstability. Obviously the forehand brings this like sidewalk into play or this little walking path, but we aren't trying to yank it so far to the left that it gets a hold up the tree on the left. Okay, now. That is what I expected to happen with the zone for two reasons. One. A little more shallow than one might anticipate and two premium plastic and my hands are like the sun's not going to help us here because the sun is directly behind but like my hands look so dry because they're just cold i have really bad circulation in my hands and so uh playing i love the cold for everything except my job which is disc golf because my hands get such bad circulation that the first thing that goes is touching my hands not going to give that like the oh man the statement of doom basically being our first forehand with it. It's just something to keep in mind is for all of you that like those really shallow putters, they come off my hands when I try to give them the beans or give them any sort of power, they come off my hand early back there. So I have to make a mental note for that. So I'm pretty confident that like actual course rules, they don't play this as OB, but this course is also designed to be more friendly for beginners and whatnot. So we're gonna play it as OB just to hold ourselves a little more accountable. Play the course as it should be, here we go. Okay, I know what we're doing and we're just not committing. We're like stabbing with our hands. Stab, 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 stab. Can't be doing that. Got to make sure that we're like actually committing on putts, actually sending it. It's like I suddenly have this like choked up state of fear when it comes to actually releasing putts clean and smooth. And so I'm not trusting them to have any power or pop because I keep, when I'm doing that, I'm actually hitting a lot of bands lately, which is letting me know I'm giving them enough pop. In fact, I'm giving them too much pop. Let's move on to the next hole and see if we can sort of mentally prepare for that slip that we had on that hole. All right, 220 feet, basket stead ahead. I mean, I'm telling you, when I come play this course on the regular, I'm throwing my pig almost every time. Not this pig, but my current workhorse pig, because it's just a bunch of stock hyzers at least to start. So really good test here on throwing these on hyzers over and over again, which is really the sort of cheat code for using these overstable putting approach discs is you can just throw them on reliable hyzers every time and let them do work. Big skip right next to the basket. Perfect. I like that. I liked that a lot. Came out on the hyzer and it held it, but it wasn't like so much over stability that it was like pushing and trying to get out the air. Another thing about the zone for me personally is, is that I'll tell people all the time, the zone is a four speed that requires four speed speed. While a lot of people really like the zone is because if you don't throw it fast, even on those approach shots, if you give it sort of like a half bid or a half shot, that four speed mid range speed picks up, which causes it to be more overstable, which then allows it to be more reliable. So I know a lot of people like it for that, and that was kind of another worry with me on throwing it here was like, am I gonna have to get it up to speed every time? And even throwing it there, it's perfect, really great. Okay, so this pushed into the woods. So it's a little further out. Wind is swirling. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. It's a good thing I'm putting with the PA3s today and not the daggers. Cause I mean, you can see how hard these are kicking and moving. That has been my one thing with the daggers is I like the glide. But on a day like today, where the wind is really picking up, 
Daggers are so hard. It's like trying to putt with wind sails. Because they just have so much glide. It's a benefit for some, but really, really tough to read the wind, especially as a push putter. Don't think it's the fault of the zone. I'm just like switching to these PA3s. The putt's all over the place right now. So we're paying more attention to the shots than we are the putts. All right, so let's take a quick moment to talk about hand feel and just these discs in general. Between the two thumb tracks, I would say that the thumb track like depth, pretty identical between these two. It's not like one necessarily stands out above the other. I would say if there's any difference, it's the grippiness obviously of a base plastic, which can be nice, except for the fact that they beat in really fast. For me personally, when I have like a workhorse pig in my bag, because I'm throwing it so often, I would say that the reason I have to have three pigs in my bag cycling at all times is because my overstable option doesn't last more than like three months before it starts losing its overstability, which makes me start questioning it. Something like a premium plastic option could be really good to allow that to just hold for a really long time. You look at someone even like Brody who has zones in his bag and he's had that clear get freaky zone in his bag for over a year. He's a touring pro. He's throwing a lot harder than me. He's throwing hidden trees. This dude's killing it out there, smashing that zone and it's still overstable. So there is a beauty to that premium plastic that you kind of sacrifice to the grippiness. But once you beat in a seasoned like premium plastic disc, we've all had these. They get grippy, it just takes time. So the freshness of it, definitely a factor here. Now we look at something that I really wanna highlight here is depth of the disc. So if you can look, that's my finger jammed in there where I want it to be. You can see that there is extra lip, just a little bit, but enough right there on my finger that's kind of hanging out, which makes it really nice for the forehands. I don't have to worry about it slipping when I'm coming through with power, bam, I know that thing's jammed in there and my thumb is locked on the thumb track, so boom. Now, on the zone, when I jam it in there, that lip suddenly like, it, it's, it's like my finger is rolling over that edge. So it's not as deep necessarily as the pig. So I just have to be more conscious on it, which could because normally zones, I don't have the option. I can't really pinch down on the top. If I do, I have to move my thumb a lot further in. And now I'm holding like a different angle, which makes it a lot harder to come on these hyzer angles. And I'm almost on more of a forced anhyzer angle. So with the thumb track, I can actually maintain my angle and really grip up and boom, I can feel that tighten. So I do think that this, if you find you like the shallowness of the zone, but you do feel when you really try to hit it on those longer forehands, that it's slipping off and you're losing the shot back here, which I think is very common for shallow discs on forehands. Thumb track could be a really nice alternative. All right, so I got these two options. I would throw them on a forehand, but I actually think that our next hole, we're gonna be throwing a forehand as well. So we're gonna go one more backhand, but this backhand, rather than a hyzer, I'm gonna try to throw these on a little bit of ante and just throw them as straight as I possibly can. That's the goal. Now, something about the pig, and I do actually, you know, don't say a lot of negatives about the pig ever on this channel, but I don't think the pig actually holds in Anheuser very well. At least when you throw a pig on ante, if you give it a lot of juice or torque or anything, it doesn't ever really fight out. Even if you throw a nose up, they don't like Anheuser. So I'll be, have to be careful on if I put it on too much Anheuser, it's not coming out of it. So here we go. And that, that's a testament to what I'm working on right now, but uh, that's nowhere close. So uh, that was a pure grip lock. Glad we got that on camera, but it felt really good. Me trying to go on Anheuser really allows me to pull in. Here we go. Okay, there we go. That's really nice. That's really nice. And you can still see that it's pretty overstable because once it got up there, it was on Annie and then it started fading out a little bit and then it still got a good amount of bounce once it was up there. So I'll be the first to admit, I'm not trying to be biased out here. So I did actually bring it along. I pulled it out of the trash can. I do have the banger top. So let's see how the banger top feels. Now the banger top, I can actually get in a lot more. So this should be really good. Another straight option that I can throw here. Once again, just want to give the banger a fair chance. Man, it's just crazy because like it, it just shot in the ground. Oh well, we tried to give it another chance. All right, so for the first time, we have the pig outside. Here we go. There we go. Bang. It's in. Brother, brethren. 
Just putts all over the place, guys. Putts all over the place. For any of you that ever felt unconfident in your putt, this takes time, this takes reps. But even someone like me, who would say that I'm a good putter and I'm very confident in my putting, we go through phases where you're stepping up 15, 20 foot putts and you're just like, I mean, I'm trying to do the same thing I've always done, but it's not coming out the same. And that's why we head back to the practice screen to try to get that dialed in, get that figured out. I like these on the straight shots. Let's give this forehand another chance. Call me a liar, call me whatever you want. 260 feet. This is near the edge of what I would use something like this for. Now, I will say that like Precious Child, I'm throwing up to 300 feet, which is a really beat in pig. But 260 feet on a hyzer, that is a solid pump for especially am arms looking at these discs right here. So like I said, especially when I go with these really overstable ones, 260 feet is quite a, quite a get, but this is one of the signature holes out on this course. So really, really like it. Really beautiful green, mess to the left, things like that. Traditionally, that little like thicker green grass has grown up, so it makes it a lot harder. But thankfully, since it's down, we don't really have a fear of losing the disc. We're gonna go for it. And that might be in the road. Nope, hit the fence. Okay, I think it's a Robbie C review curse that if I'm ever reviewing or looking at discs, I'm just destined for wind. So, one at a time, okay. Yeah, I mean, you can just see how much movement that's getting out of the wind. That's crazy, brother. Yeah, not bad, just on the edge of circle. I wonder if it's the white one that I'm just really not putting well with. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, guys. Just outside the water. Truly can't make this stuff up. A couple forehand holes to close us out. This is 244 feet uphill the whole way. I'm having to like close my right eye because at this point this contact has become completely dead to me. I'm gonna go with the zone first. You can see this tree right here. I mean, we got a strong headwind coming. So it's gonna be very curious to see how these hold up in this headwind. Like I said, I'm gonna give this a little bit more grip, hold it a little tighter and try to make sure that I'm hitting that release point with this. One quick solution to make sure I don't lose it back here is just tighten the grip. Obviously that lets me open it up more, but if it's overstable, and especially if this flight plate kicks up with this crazy wind, it should come back just fine. Nope. Yeah, we got over on it and the wind, instead of helping it because I got the flight plate down on it, the wind, instead of helping it, actually just smashed it down. Gotta love physics and throwing Frisbees in the wind. And now's where I want that wind to kick up and like help move it. Yeah, tough scenes out here, gents and ladies, tough scenes. All right, so the power forehand while also having to like think about the fact that I got a grip really hard, definitely factoring into my head, but let's see on a little touch forehand. See, like that came out super smooth. Like that got there so fast. That's nice. When it comes out, it comes out clean. It's just hard for me as a guy who has been throwing, I mean, I've thrown thousands upon thousands of forehands with a pig, significantly less with the zone. So I just, I'm, I'm having to think about a lot more than my normal just stroke because the disc feels so different. So if you hate the pig for the depth of it, this could be, I mean, the answer for you. I'm wondering if subconsciously what it is, is, is my body's like, let's make the pig just shine because that's who we are. And because of that, okay, we missed a putt on a pig there. So that's understandable. Banger GT. So the goal is I'm gonna throw this so shanked that it leaves the screen. So you can even try to follow it or whatever. This'll, it'll make a lot of sense here in a second. So let me check range. Okay. Turns out the extra battery that I brought doesn't actually have any charge on it. So uh, we're gonna fire these real fast and get final thoughts here. Oh, nope. Okay, that's fine. That's way past it. Okay, 
I did like that came out that came out smooth not trying to go hard on it that's the key is if I don't try to like just mash the zone that's where I lose it is on the power forehands I don't lose it on short forehands just the power ones all right so this last hole that we're gonna look at you can kind of see the basket like through the trees up there this is one that's very odd because you kind of got to throw it on like a power forehand or a power hyzer let it push through and get kind of lucky. If you go understable, you can flip it up some, but if you also go overstable enough, it's never gonna stand up and you can kind of get skinny through these trees. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, that was really good. Went long, but that was good. Yeah, it's a tough look, everybody. It's a tough look trying to throw something so shallow. All right, so let's talk final thoughts on the Zone GT concepts versus the Pig for Robbie C personally. Some of you may have skipped ahead to this portion already, and you can kind of probably guess where I landed overall based on how, especially the last few couple holes went, which was still gonna be a Pig guy. I really wish that I could be a GT guy because really the thought of having a premium plastic disc or finding a disc that's overstable like this that i can just put in my bag reliably use and know that it's going to hold that for several months beyond just three months and all of a sudden i'm like i think it's time to switch out to a new one things like that a great example of this is that every single time i've gone up to visit foundation this year and i go up every few months you'll notice in almost all those videos i always have a different overstable putting approach pig in my bag because they just cycle that fast especially when you're using them. I will admit that I am extremely biased in this scenario because I have thrown thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pig shots. So the depth is really the kicker for me. I like the zone on a backhand. I thought that the zone GT flew really good on a backhand. It felt very comfortable. I was able to make adjustments and throwing my pigs. Loved that. But for me, I do want a disc that goes both ways that I can throw backhand and forehand. And it's just the shallowness of the zone. I thought maybe like if they did a zone OS bottom because the zone OS actually feels a little deeper. I have a zone OS in my bag, but just the shallowness of the zone, like right here, I'm even putting my, I really have to like jam that thing in there in order to get any sort of lip. If I rest it comfortably in there, my finger is rolling off of the edge already. So that's just not necessarily a great fit for me personally. But if you like the zone, you're a zone thrower and you're looking for that extra bit of grip or angle control, then I think that the Zone GT could be the answer for you. Because I don't really have a dog in this fight and I won't be bagging either, I'm gonna say that I really think you should vote for whichever one feels more comfortable in your hand. I'm a ringer guy myself, but totally get the bang zone hype and all of that. It's a very different feel, but you may like it a lot because I'm not gonna bag either of them. I'm not gonna vote on which one, but you guys let me know in the comments for those of you, especially that have a battle pack already, which one are you leaning into? I just have to go and say, this is a really, really cool idea. And I love that Bob and Discrap are continuing to innovate ways to change the disc golf game. I think bringing the customers in to actually help pick and vote, it's a very Mountain Dew-esque style thing that is super, super cool. My heart was already broken in the last Mountain Dew vote where Baja Blast didn't make it in permanence. But I really do think this is great as opposed to other companies that I won't name who are sitting on big box contracts and their laurels and just getting passed by everyone else in terms of relevance. And sure, they're like, oh, we could remake discs and you like take discs that people are using and throwing and put them in more available plastics or we could just come up with crazy discs instead and mess around in the Frankenstein workshop and see what we can come up with. Once again, not naming any names, but we want premium plastic pigs. I think as the Robbie C Nation, we can make it happen. We just gotta get a few more people behind us. And I'm working on a certain Fortnite player who she may or may not have thrown one in from distance uh, to secure an MVP open win. Just saying. I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment and if there are other discs that you wanna see me compare against the pig, knowing that, you know, like I said, I'm extremely biased, but I'm happy to embrace the challenges would love to see those. So let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this. I really did try to stay unbiased here. Hopefully that showed. If you thought it showed, let me know. And if you thought, nah, he was pretty biased from the get go, I guess, let me know that as well. In the meantime, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day and you can make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're gonna leave you with the birdie.